G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and I'm just outside of Lismore in northern New South Wales having a look at some recovery from flood damage with a local excavator operator, Rod Lill. Rod, how are you mate? Good mate, yourself? Not too bad. <laughs> now Rod, this looks like some pretty extensive damage here mate. Can you talk me through what happened? Uh, in the floods, what happened, there was a, a big slip happened up above the dam here. Yep. And there was more clumps of camphor like that one that's half laying over up in there yep and uh it all slipped down into the dam and it washed all the water out of the dam as well as washing the hole right through the through the center of the wall so when i got here to look at it it was basically full of slop and sludge and trees and rocks and mess and it was full virtually to the top yeah. so you built a new path into the dam brought your 20 ton excavator in yep and your first job was to clean out the base of the dam and yeah. then you had to start rebuilding the wall. Now you were talking to me off camera about keying in the wall. Can you explain a little bit to the viewers what you did? Yeah, well, once I got all the, all the material out of the dam, it's a matter of then keying the new part of the, the material back into the old part of the wall. Yep. So that it becomes structural again. So then, tying, tying the new material in with the old and yes. packing it down properly yeah, and yeah. making sure that you're using good quality material yeah. and not just the slop that was in the dam. That's right, yeah. And in the bottom of this dam, there's a lot of clay, which was handy because I could I could just you could dig, use that dig, and bring it up, dig more clay out, and use that to compact all the wall back in and key it back in. Well, we've ended up now with a pretty solid wall, and the dam's holding; it's slowly filling up again. Yep. And you've built a spillway at the other side. Yep. Now, the idea, of course, with spillways is to relieve pressure on the entire dam wall mm -hmm. and just allow that overflow of water with normal flood events. But that means that there's a lot of erosion pressure on that spillway area, doesn't there? Can be. So today you're using some concrete matting to secure that spillway. Yep. Um, and stop that digging into your new work and destroying everything. Yep, we'll install that, the, uh, the grass will grow through it and it'll hold it together and uh, yeah. Well I'm keen to have a look at the concrete mat and yep. then get your tips for laying it out and using it because it's actually quite an easy product to use. Yep. But like anything, you've got to use it properly to get good results, don't yeah. you? Yeah, definitely. You've only got a five tonne excavator to do the job today and it's a fair slope here. Yeah. And you're using the heavier duty concrete mats because there's two types of concrete mats as well you're using the heavier duty ones today yep five tons up to it it, it is on its limit yep um but yeah they, they're in a round roll so they're easy to roll around i can carry these yep. um, in close yep um but today it's it's a bit greasy yeah uh, we've had a couple of showers of rain and if i went over that yeah she'd probably take off so what i'll do is i'll probably pick them up and roll them down in there and then spin them around in there and and, uh, Caution's the better side of valor. Oh, yeah. It's been a couple of things that you've tried to do here. The first is I notice you've keyed in the start with a bit of a lip. Yep. So it's important not to have the concrete mat sitting up on the flow of water, isn't it? Yeah, that'll be down below the water level, but still when the water's flowing out... Yeah, you, There'll still be movement there, Yeah, you don't there. want it to get under the mat. So yep. I'll put the mat over there and then I'll, I'll put some clay on top of the leading edge of the mat. Right, so, so you'll bury it, it right in. Yeah, yeah. So okay. That, and, and we'll have that pinned down as well. So tip number one, put it below the water line, yep. bury it and pin it. Yes. So you want to do everything you can to get that leading edge yeah. secured. Yeah, you don't want the water at high flow to sort of pick it up. Now you've also, this is a bit of a compromise, this spillway, isn't it? Because it's got to be a trafficable spillway, so you've yep. got to be able to drive vehicles over it. Yep. Ideally, you were telling me off camera, the flatter the better, because you want to be able to spread water out rather than concentrate it into one specific zone. Yeah, we normally we would have done that, but you know, we're just having a nice gentle dish this time. Now you're going to be running out a couple of mats here, so it's also important to mark out the site. Um, so we have Troy with us today, who's going to be doing some paint marking and some guidance for you. Yep. He's your man on the ground. Because this mat that we're using is, is the firm mat, Yep. You can't steer it around as much. Okay. Um, if it's if it's a flexible mat, you can... You, you can, can twist it a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. You can yep. bends and corners and stuff. What are some tips when you're rolling out a mat, mate? Pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's not hard. Because it's, it's a roll. <laughs> it, as, as long as you get it in the right position and it's going to head this, the right way that you want to go, just flick it out with the, the bucket and it'll just roll out. So that's where your spray and mark and your yep. straight lines as are important, are As long as we start straight... But then Rod can manoeuvre it anyway with his bucket. He can get in there with his his bucket and just, you know, push it over left or right. Give it a nudge. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's, it's strong enough that you can actually 
get in there and move it without it tearing or anything like that. Now, Troy, we're also going to be rolling out two mats here, aren't we? Because it's a very wide spillway here. Um, so you're actually going to be having two mats rolled out side by side and you're going to be joining them in the middle, correct? Yes, yep. So you're going to use some geo grid and some white underlay or geo textile yep. to hold that together, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. Now that's the secret source for joining these mats, isn't it? Well, it is when you've got high flow water areas. Yep. You don't want it to actually work its way underneath the mat and start digging it out. So with having the underlay underneath and the geo, we call it a joining strip. Yep. So when we join the two mats together, it's going through the, the underlay and the joining strip. Yep. And that's what holds it together so it won't break apart and the water won't seep underneath and undercut it. And that geo grid that you're using for that joining strap, it's really tough stuff, isn't it? It's used in building roadways and all yeah, sorts of it. things. Yep. So it's going to last a long time. Well, Rod, Troy, thank you very much for having us out here today. Rod, expert installation. Troy, design of an amazing machine that makes an incredible product. What amazed me was the ability for you guys to start and finish this job in a couple of hours and drive on it immediately with only a couple of people. Yeah, well, that's the whole point of the product, isn't it? Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not, you know... It's, it's not a stupid product either yep. because, you know, you've got to do certain things. So some expert tips from you, Rod, are always digging your leading edge on a job like this? On this, yeah, yeah. You want to keep the water from getting under the mat at the start. Yep. Once it's in the mat, it's fine. Um, in different applications, in drainages and stuff, if you can overlap that mat yep. on your uphill side. And you've got the new method of running the joining strip down the middle there with yep. some more geo mesh, making it an even more solid result. Any water getting underneath is just gonna dig. Water's gonna find its own path, doesn't yep. matter how much you try, so you kinda need to filter it where you want it to go. So if, if you don't do that, it will dig in underneath and then you gotta start all over again. Yeah, 40 MPA concrete. Right. You know, once you, we can drive on it the next day after we pour on it. Yep. So, and then after the 28 days, it's 40 MPA, you can drive a big trucks, rollers, anything on it. Well guys, it's been an absolute privilege coming out here to see the experts put it in and get some great tips for using a product like this. It's quick, it's labour friendly, it's cost friendly, why wouldn't you do it? That's guys, it. if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the little subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, plenty more on timthompson.ag. And fellas, hopefully we can come out and see you at work on another job next time.